Welcome to the Flamingo Campground in the Florida Everglades. Today we're going to talk to you a little bit about what you need if you're coming to Flamingo. What do you need to know? Well, the first thing you need to know is you're 50 miles from the nearest grocery store. There's a small 7-Eleven sort of camp store here over by the marina. But other than that, there's nothing. And when I say 50 miles, it's 50 miles. So you want to make sure you pack in anything you're going to need for your stay. We're here for six days, so not a super long time. And our refrigerator was so full, it didn't hardly want to cool down. We're, we're surviving that. It's doing pretty good. All right, we are on our way to the campground here in Everglades. And this is a must-do. Let me show it to you. But it's a good place for lunch. Everything you'd want at a farmer's market. And I think they're famous for their milkshakes. So if you're coming to the Everglades and are going to go camping, you might want to stop here before, before you get out to no man's land. Oh, boy. Yep, famous for those shakes. Look like you're just driving out through farmer's fields. Sugar cane. And sugar cane and such. But this is the way to the Everglades National Park. <laughs> All right, so here we are at the Flamingo Campground. And these sites are huge. We got an end one in the powered loop. I think this one's huge. It's pretty big. It's pretty big. Beautiful campground. All the sites are paved. All of them have a fire pit. Here's where it gets tricky. Only half of the T-loop sites have electricity. The rest of them are boondocking only. And when I say the sites have electricity, that's all they have. There is no water and there is no sewer. We were fortunate this time we did get an electric site. Uh, they're very restrictive on generators. They have to be shut down by 8 p.m. and they cannot start up until 8 a.m. So keep that in mind. And they do enforce that. Uh, if you're planning on using one of the non-powered sites, just keep that in mind. It can put a pretty strong drain on your batteries running fans and things like that. Kind of see behind me here, the campground. These are boondocking sites. There's plenty of them and there's plenty of availability. We're here in January, which is the winter. Mosquitoes are a real deal. Uh, they're not as thick as they are in the summer, but they're here, they'll bite you. <laughs> so you wanna make sure you bring DEET or a good bug repellent with at least 40% DEET. Needs to be the strongest you can get. Uh, this is no joke. Uh, there's marshland and swampland all around here bayous and ponds so mosquitoes are here year round for sure you're going to want a screen room down here you're not going to want to be outside with that one so we set up our screen room if you're coming i recommend you come in the winter summertime a lot of rain every afternoon pouring torrential rain uh, that can really dampen your trip there is a dump station and a fresh water fill station here located over by with a bathhouse. There are two bathhouses on the T-Loop. Neither of them have hot water. They are not equipped with hot water. Here is one and there's the other one. Trash is provided at the bathhouses. While the T-Loop doesn't have hot water, the A-Loop, which actually is tent only, but so close to the T-Loop, the A-Loop has hot water. They have solar, so the water here in the shower is hot. Uh, this is the fresh water fill station. Like somebody left a water pressure regulator. That's not good. They're gonna miss that. This one says clean water, and you can see it's right here on the road. About 50, I don't know, 30, 40 feet away is the dump station. And this is for flushing only, non-potable. Hedging my bet. That's it. We're not out of water. We just don't wanna run out of water. Exactly. So there's another pretty good hike really close to the campground. It is Echo Pond. Walked right here, didn't even need to take the Jeep. So let's go see what this is about. Oh, look. 
Oh, I bet this would be a good place to see birds. Oh, it says that there's alligators back here and all sorts of birds to look for. Look at this, there's a bench. Yep. Oh, what a view. Are those white birds over there? Oh my gosh, how pretty. That is pretty. Oh, and they're in the, in the trees over there too. Oh, wow. If you come here, if you come to the campground and you just want to do an easy, easy trail, even though you're in the Everglades, take a look at this one. It's completely done. Yeah, this is the one you want to do. It's a bit mosquito-y, so come prepared. But this is a really good trail. All right, you're coming to Flamingo Campground. Remember, this is a national park. And while there is a concessionaire that handles the boat ramp, the marina, and some tours, there's also the National Park Service. They have the visitor center here and the one at the front of the park right here at Flamingo, the National Park Service. They have a lot to offer. They actually have guided tours. And these ranger, rangers here are so knowledgeable. So don't forget that. This is actually a historic building destroyed by various hurricanes, most recently Hurricane Irma. But it's almost finished being reconstructed. The National Park Service Visitor Center is going to be located on the second floor mostly with some of the exhibits on the first floor that will be able to withstand any future floods. They really put a lot of thought into it and it'll be really exciting when they actually get to open back up. And you got flamingos? You want to prepare to do something. So today we're looking forward to actually taking the boat tour. So you can just sit at the campground and just enjoy the quiet solitude and maybe take a few walks and do some bird watching, but there's some other things to do here. The flamingos is about the water, the water in the back country, the water out in the Florida Straits here. So today we are gonna take a boat ride. We actually saw the crocodile, and there's a difference between a crocodile and an alligator. Now there's a Florida crocodile. There he is. Teeth and everything. Uh-oh. Now he's mad. Oh, this looks good. He's like, come on, I'll get in a boat with you. That's cool. Yeah, another big boy. Look at that. Yes, he is as big as he looks. These are the first Florida crocodiles I've ever seen. I've seen alligators, but not crocs. This one actually looks like a gator. I gotta see his nose. No, he's a croc. He's got a point. He's got a pointed nose. Where'd he go? There he is. Yeah, he's definitely a croc. Whoa! Okay, got some of that. Yeah, Brad, I got some of that. That's what they do, they just dog you. So we have a real treat this morning. We're actually going to have a church service right on the water. Thank you. 
Ah, oh, that was a real treasure. You know, when you come to the national parks, it's really neat that you can be surprised. Make sure you keep flexible, you know, don't plan all of your time. So then you can take advantage of all the neat little surprises. That's one of the things you need to do when you come to Everglades National Park and really any national park. Save time, be prepared to be surprised. Let the park surprise you with really cool stuff. So let us know down in the comments. We'd love to know what have you been surprised about when you visited national parks. There's something else that is a not to be missed thing to do and that's to do the Enhanced Trail and the Nike Missile that they have here. So I'm going to link above uh, that experience and so that'll be on our first trip that we did to the Everglades National Park a couple of years ago but you're going to want to check that out. Okay, if you've been to the Everglades National Park, let us know what your favorite thing to do was. And if you've been to the Antigua Trail, or what trails you've been on. Guys, your trip to the Everglades can be whatever you make of it. Whether you want to stay inside your RV and hide from the mosquitoes, or get out and enjoy the trails, the paddling, and just the exploration of some untouched wilderness.